down the road, I'll see a sign somewhere. I'll see uh, a, a sign in the yard of a business, or I'll see a sign, in this case, this was in the yard of a, of a denominational religious, religious body. And, I, and I, I read those signs, and, and, and maybe, maybe, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe it's to your chagrin that, uh, that I see these things and bring them to your attention. But I, I hope this uh, uh, is a profitable thought process for you. Uh, the sign simply said what you read on the screen, the invitation of Christ, uh, it, basically, uh, is what it said. And, and I started to thinking, started thinking about that uh, as to whether or not the in, it's the invitation of Christ or the command of Christ that all men uh, become obedient to Him. And and while I'll agree that it is an invitation. We do operate on free will, and this is the part of the lesson where I tell you what I'm going to tell you, and then I'll tell you. But, uh, but to uh, when you think about it, it is an invitation. It is a free will invitation to, uh, to be obedient to the Lord. But nonetheless, it is still a command, and we need not lose track and lose sight of that idea of that truth that the Lord commands all mankind to be faithful and obedient to him. Now, nobody really seems to like to be told what to do. I think as we grow older, uh, and um, many children, as we can see, don't like to be told what to do. We all start out that way. And at some point as we mature and we grow, uh, hopefully we gain the ability to take instruction not just to fall in line and follow whatever we're told but to take instruction to take those things into our into our conscience into our consciousness into our into our hearts and realize and and and, and figure out whether or not these things are so should i follow this or should i not realizing the wisdom of those that have gone on before us, you know, in our physical lives, we have our parents and our grandparents, and in some cases, great grandparents that we can lean upon for understanding, and people that have lived, people that have been through things that we that we can't imagine, and we can gain some we can gain some uh, good instruction from those that have lived through things that we that we have not. And just the same way, spiritually, you know, we, we can learn great things from looking into that eternal word of the Lord. You know, as people don't like to be told what to do, you know, it seems like in the world today, command is an uncomfortable word. It's uncomfortable for many to, be, to, to think of being commanded to do something. Many would rather be invited in fact, if I were having a party at my house, if I were having a gathering at my house and I sent you, I sent you a piece of paper that says, I command you to come to my party, probably nobody would show up. I, I would hope not. But uh, if I sent you an invitation and said, I'm inviting you to come to my party, I'm inviting you to come and partake in, in this time of, of, uh, of getting together and, and uh, food or whatever it may be that, that would be at that party. Uh, many would rather, all of us, I believe, would rather be invited to come on their own terms, to uh, come to the realization that, yes, this is something that I would like to do. You know, that's uh, something that uh, that we understand. But the difference here is, is that when we're talking about the invitation of Christ or the command of Christ, realize that God is God and we are not. This is Jesus Christ that is uh, inviting us to partake of something that has been commanded to all mankind. And we, we can't lose sight of that difference. We can't lose sight of that fact that, that we're human beings and he is God. And in, as far as that goes, we need to be those that are in accordance 
with his will. So I want to look at some scriptures this morning, and I want to look at this idea of, of the invitation of Christ or the command of Christ. And as I've already spoiled the ending, you know, I, I do believe that it is both, that it is an invitation to take part in, to lay hold of a hope. It is an invitation to take part in what the Lord has sacrificed for, for us. That, that uh, nonetheless, that it is commanded to all mankind. That if we don't take this invitation, that there are certain expectations. There are certain expectations that we should, that we should have. And, and each one of us needs to make that decision for ourselves. You know, one of the, one of the things that I'm, I see and have seen many times throughout, uh, throughout my short life is that, is that in the religious world, many people are following what they've been told. They, they are being told by their parents, their grandparents, by the preacher, by somebody on television, this is what you have to do in order to be saved without any without any uh, desire to look into the scriptures for themselves. We touched on that. It was mentioned this morning in the Bible study time. And this is something that we, that we uh, all have experienced in our lives, being told uh, what we must do. And perhaps in your religious life, you've spent your life being told what is expected of you, but if you're sitting here today, I hope that you take the time to look into the scriptures for yourself because the Lord doesn't want people that are just showing up with no knowledge of him. He wants people to come to him because they understand who he is, because they have faith and because, because they have a right understanding of who he is and that all authority lies in him, that he has every right to command us to do to do these things but and nonetheless he did invite each and every one of us you now Matthew 11 starting at verse 28 you know Christ invites all to come to him Matthew 11 at verse 28 beginning says come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Does that sound like someone who's overbearingly commanding you to do something? That is an invitation to come. To uh, put aside those things that would drag us down. To take a rest in him because because his burden is light. This is the mind of Christ. He desires that we come to him. But make no mistake, as we'll get to later in the lesson, make no mistake that these things are indeed commanded, and he has every right to do so. But he really desires that we come to the knowledge of him, that we obey his will because we love him, because we realize the sacrifice that was given for us. Now in Ephesians 2, starting at verse 8, we read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So many people stop at that first couple of sentences. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and it is that gift of God. There is nothing that we can do to pay for this invitation, to pay for the things that, that we receive by becoming those that are in Christ. But if we read to the end as we did there, at the end of this passage in verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Things must be done. It's an invitation to do the things that the Lord desires. Those works, as it continues on, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 
you know, these things are the things that we should be walking in, that we should be looking at and considering to be our template for our footsteps through life. Uh, yes, we've been saved through faith, by grace. Yes, indeed, it's not of ourselves. It's not because of the wonderful things that we do. It's not because, it's not because we individually you know, give money to such and such a charity. It's not because we've uh, helped so many of the homeless and so on uh, individually. It's not that we've been such a great, wonderful person. There are those that are banking their eternity on their good works. And as we see from this passage, that is not the thing that will get us into heaven. It is that desire to be what the Lord wants from us. And because of that, we desire to do those things that, that he desires. That we should walk in them. Those things that God prepared. Those, those works, those actions that God prepared beforehand. Now as we um, look a little further... Revelation 3 at verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Again, here's an invitation. And it's, it's a two-way invitation, if you will. Christ is inviting us in, but <clears throat> again, he wants us to be those that desire to be with him as well. It's it's, uh, it's not enough <clears throat> just to show up, just to show up um, at his party, so to speak. But he desires that you invite him into your life. And we do that by <clears throat> looking into the word, by seeking his truth, by seeking his word. You know, in, in Isaiah 55, and verse 6, <clears throat> we're reminded to seek him while he may be found. That is, uh, while we have breath in our bodies. While we have breath in our bodies, we are to understand who Christ is and to take hold of that invitation that he's given to us. But we, we need to make room in our lives and get rid of all those things that... that fill up our our hearts the things of this world the 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 things that are destructive the desires of of mankind that that creep in and cause us to do things and to think things and to and to act in such a way that we are not uh are not distinguishable as those that are different those that are in christ you know if we are accepting that invitation of christ it should be able to be understood. You know, I often talk with people, I've talked with people in the past who, who claim to be very religious, who perhaps even go to the extent of showing up with a religious group, uh, you know, every, every week and every time perhaps their doors are open. Yet, what do I often hear coming out of their mouth? But words that are not befitting a Christian. I see and understand from getting to know them a little bit that the things that they take part in are not befitting a Christian. By their very nature, the things that they involve themselves in in life are not befitting of one who names Christ. It, there are things that, that we couldn't imagine Christ taking part in in life. Yet, again, that's that uh, idea of accepting Jesus into my heart you know, I, yes I believe that there is that there is a Jesus and I believe that he is but I'm going to keep him right over there I'm not going to I'm not going to actually come to understand what his desire for me is I'm just going to love him and put him right here you know and, and that's and that's the mistake that many make with this idea of the invitation of Christ it's so much more comfortable to think that it's up to us and on our terms, we can come to Christ. On our terms, we can, we can keep him at the distance that we want. And when we need him, when things are going bad, we can bring him a little closer. Those are the days we'll show up to a service of the church. 
But uh, then when we find that we're doing okay, we can push them a little further away because after all, it's an invitation. It's an invitation that we can take or leave that can come or go on our terms. And that's, and that's the point that I'm hoping to get across here in this, that, that we can't leave it just at an invitation of Christ. Yes, there's an invitation there, but we can't forget the severity of God. Not just the goodness, but the severity of God. That, that we realize that he commands certain things of mankind, always has. And has always had the right to do so. So as we switch gears and go to the right side of our screen, and now we're going to kind of look at some commands of the Lord. If my clicker will take us there. There it goes. So turn with me to Acts, the book of Acts 17. Acts 17 at verse 29 as we begin talking about the commands of Christ. In Acts 17, starting at verse 29, we read, Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead now there is that again as we just spoke there is that invitation there is that invitation invitation but we can't forget we can't forget that he has, in verse 31 at Acts 17, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the, men, by the man whom he has ordained. There's going to be a day when judgment is going to come to all people. <clears throat> and the Lord has commanded that, we, that all men come to him and follow him. He's invited us and he's given us a, a time and, and the the goodness of God, the patience of our Lord in giving us this time. Thinking about the patience of the Lord, thinking about the fall of mankind in the garden. And we've talked about this many times. The fall of man in the garden and what has God been doing ever since? He's been trying to get us back. He's been working toward this plan of redemption. And now it is here and we have the opportunity to take a hold of that. The command is no different than it was in the beginning, that we, that we be obedient to the Lord. You know, in the beginning, we had, mankind had one rule, and we failed. Now, because of that, because of our sin, because of, because of that uh, moving off into a realm that the Lord commanded that mankind would not, because they partake of, partook of that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we have this invitation today in Christ that we might be that offspring of God. That we not think of the Lord and his divine nature as gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising there in Acts 17 of verse 29. We can't shape God into something that we want him to be. We can't, like those that were in the wilderness that desired a God that, that became impatient and started to form with gold uh, gods for themselves. We can't be like that in the way that we live our spiritual lives. We can't make God into something that he is not. We can sure try, and we can sure think that we are making uh, inroads in that direction. We might think, well, we've got this figured out. I'll just put God over here, and, 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 I'll, and I'll do all sorts of good things in his name, but I'm going to keep him at that distance, and, and he's going to be happy with me. Well, how do you know that? Have you looked into his word? 
He desires that we obey his commands. And again, he has every right to command us in these things. You know, as we uh, continue and look a little further, we look at John 13. Now, there's that new commandment that we read about in John 13 at verse 34. I'm going to start beginning at verse 33. Start reading at verse 33 of John 13. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, when we think of this command, to love one another. What does that really mean? What does that really mean? To to love one another as I have loved you. Well, what did the Lord do for mankind? Again, he loved us to the degree that he has allowed us an opportunity to come to him, to be obedient to him, to, to appear before God, blameless and spotless, because of that sacrifice of Christ. God has patience with mankind. He sent his only son. Christ died on the cross for our sins, giving that ultimate sacrifice. That's how he has loved us. And so in like manner as we go through our lives, this new commandment that we love one another, that we lay down our lives, our human earthly lives for those things that are godly that we realize the importance of of the things that we have come to love in this world realizing that they're all going to be burned up anyways the one thing that we can put great stock in and that we can put hope and trust in is that everlasting life in Christ and we have every reason to desire to follow those commands of the Lord. That invitation is there, yes. The Lord, I'm certain, wants us to take hold of that invitation out of our own free will, out of our own, out of our own thought and desire for him. But don't forget that it's a command to all mankind that we follow him. As we continue and uh, look at John 14 just a chapter forward John 14 at verse 21 says he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him you know knowing is not enough you know, in, in the in verse 21 there he who has my commandments and keeps them. It's not enough just to have the book in your hand. It's not enough to have the words of the Lord at your disposal. But have you kept them? You know, it's, it's again not enough to know the rules of the road. If you pull out here onto uh, Sharon Copley Road and drive on the left side of the road knowing that the right side of the road is where you should drive and you are pulled over or get into a crash and the police come to your side and say what were you doing and you say well I knew I should be on the right side of the road I just wanted to be on the left it's not going to go well for you it's not going to go well for you uh, in a court of law if you stand before the Lord and say well I knew I knew what you said I've read I've read your book Many times over, perhaps, and I I know what you said, but I really just didn't want to do that. Then it's not going to go well for you in eternity. And we know that because of his word. You know, if we love Christ, there's an action that necessarily follows through. If we love Christ and we understand who he is, there has to be an action to follow through with the things that he's commanded, the things that he's begged for us 
to obey. That invitation that he's had sitting there for all mankind for many generations. It's not enough just to accept the invitation and say, okay, yes, sure, I, I, I believe in Christ. But to accept the invitation knowing who he is also means that you'll follow those commands. And that you'll cleanse yourself and purge out any of those selfish thoughts that maybe you say inside your heart, well, nobody can tell me what to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe that still has a hold in you. You know, yesterday I was at a, I was at a, 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 a my, my son's Boy Scout troop was, uh, had, had a fundraiser parking cars for a large event and I was there and I parked I parked the uh, I parked my car in a spot and a police officer came through a little bit later and said hey you need to move that car I don't understand why part of me wanted to say but why why do I need to move the car what, what difference is it going to make to move it 10 feet that way but nonetheless I moved the car there's that there, there's maybe that draw in your heart to put up a fight and say but I don't understand this why does the Lord want me to get wet why does the Lord desire that I'm immersed in water well he's got the authority just as that officer of the law had the authority to tell me to move my car the Lord has the authority to command us to be obedient to the gospel of Christ he's inviting us make no mistake he really desires that we that we come not kicking and screaming but if we are kicking and screaming and fighting the whole way we don't we shouldn't have any expectation of heaven after this life we should have an expectation of words such as go away from me I never knew you we should have an expectation of of not pleasant things and it doesn't matter, as we mentioned in the Bible, was mentioned in the Bible study this morning. Again, uh, you should really come to the morning Bible study. Some good, some good, some good uh, discussion happens, and I often refer back to it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not on purpose that we refer to all these things uh, in the in the morning Bible study. But some good conversation happens. And and as we're talking this morning, we we talked about this idea of coming kicking and screaming and, and fighting and fighting our way through life uh, to battle against the things that God, that God has uh, commanded of us. It's, it's not wrong for the Lord to command us to do certain things. As we, as we think a little bit further, as we bring these two things together, we go just again within the same chapter where we were just at in John 14 going up a few verses to verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments do you love the Lord do you realize that he's given this invitation for all mankind to be obedient to him <clears throat> that he's given his son that we might be able to take hold of that of that hope do you really love him <clears throat> then lay down your earthly life as he laid down his life for all mankind Lay down that, those earthly desires and the, the life that is really getting you nowhere eternally. And follow him. If you love me, keep my commandments. So as we end things out here today, as we think on these things this afternoon and in the coming days and weeks, you know, what, what do you think of Christ? Do, do you really believe that he is who he says he is? Are you willing to step forward in that, uh, in, in that act of obedience? Understanding that he's invited you in to him? Understanding that he's commanded that all come to the knowledge of the truth and that we repent and turn away. That's what repentance is. Turning away from, from sin. Walking in a new direction. Having a new purpose in our life. Do you, do you love Christ? What do you really think of him? Do, do you really love Christ? Do, are you willing to set aside all of those things? All of those things that, that drag us down. Now, Matthew 22 of verse 42 as we've mentioned before says saying what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? 
may say unto him, the son of David. So as we think on this today, what do you think of Christ? Are you ready to heed those things that you've heard? You know, Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we've looked into the word of God today, I hope that I've at least somewhat successfully made the point that God is inviting us to everlasting life. He's commanded that we do certain things and he has every right to do so. If you've heard those words and you understand who he is and you're, and you're willing to not keep him at a distance anymore and not make him into something that is of your own devising, but to act upon the pure will of the Lord, then why wait another day? If you believe that he is, then do like those on the day of Pentecost who were cut to the heart and said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? They stepped forward into the, into the waters of baptism, confessing Christ before men, understanding that they had crucified the Son of Christ, or the, son of the, the Son of God, Christ. They, are you willing to take that same step today? The same step that the Ethiopian eunuch took when he came to understand who Christ is and said, there is water, what hinders me from being baptized? Are you ready to do that? Because God said so. Because he has the authority to command those things. Because you've accepted his invitation, and out of your own desire to be pleasing to him, you're willing to step forward and do those things, then don't wait another day. If you've done those things, but you find that life has dragged you down, well, look around you, He has created his church as a support one to another. We come together today, yes, because we're commanded to come together on the first day of the week, but also because we are those that are seeking after the Lord and his will. We truly desire to come together and to be with one another, to share in the heartaches and troubles of life, to be able to build up one another. You know, you... There are days where you might not think that it's worth coming. There might be those days when it's difficult to maybe get out of bed and come to the assembly. But realize that you're helping to build up those around you. Those brethren that are also around you that may be having a difficult day, your smile, your presence can do something. To help spur them on. And that's what we're here for. So if you are struggling in any way. And need the prayers of the saints. That's again what we're here for. Make, don't, don't put it off another day. But let your, let your need be known. That we might be able to address it together. As brothers and sisters in Christ. Whatever your need may be. Please come forward. As we stand and sing. Come to Jesus, he would say.